Hello and welcome everyone to Actionable Feedback with CFA in grades kindergarten through second. We're so excited to have you here with us today. We have an amazing classroom teacher and she's also a CSAW certified educator joining us to share strategies and steps for giving actionable feedback with CSAW that supports student learning and growth. Um, let me let you know who I am. I am Mia. I am the training and professional development specialist here at CSAW. I am also, um, I, I um, am based in Chicago, Illinois, so I was sharing that with some of you, where it is very cold right now. <laughs> and I am also a former a kindergarten teacher, so um, I do have that early childhood experience. And I'm so excited to be here with you tonight. Um, we do have in the uh, back channel a few of our other friends from Seesaw that it, um, will be in the Q&A and the chat to help answer all of those questions. And um, now I am going to have the amazing Caitlin introduce herself. She will be presenting all of this great content for you today. Hi, everyone. My name is Caitlin Arakawa, and I am a third, I'm a currently a third grade teacher, former kindergarten teacher from Redlands, California. I'm excited to be sharing with you all. I've taught kindergarten for six years and it definitely has a special place in my heart. <laughs> All right, so we are so excited to have Caitlin here to share all her amazing expertise. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So we are going to begin by taking a look at two different types of feedback. And as you review these two different types of feedback, we want you to just think about the differences between each one. So here is the first type of feedback on a seesaw activity. So notice that the teacher um, has commented on this student work, good job, Job, keep working on it. Now let's take a look at the second type of feedback. So here the feedback from the teacher says, good job. I see that you were able to fill in your number bond with the whole and the two parts. Create a number sentence that matches your number bond and use the microphone to explain how you figured out your whole in your two parts. All right, so now that you've taken a look at those two different type of feedback, um, we would love to um, hear from you in the chat. Um, what do you think? Which type of feedback was better and why? Type your responses in the chat. So I'm seeing the responses coming in the chat. The second one was more specific. The second one included ways for the student to improve. Um, type B was more concise. Uh, Michelle is sharing that details are always best. All right, I see a lot of people agreeing. Students benefit the most, you all are absolutely right, when um, feedback is not only given during the learning process, but when it's specific and it supports them to grow toward their goals. Uh, Seesaw supports timely feedback that deepens learning. So here is our agenda for today. I like to call it our roadmap. So we are going to begin by learning three ways that teachers can give that actionable feedback, that feedback that supports students to meet their goals and that is specific and targeted, like you mentioned in the chat. Then we are going to talk about how you can support your your students to give feedback, peer feedback to one another. And then we're going to wrap up by talking about how you can also support families in providing feedback on their child's work. So now I am actually going to stop sharing and I'm going to turn it over to Caitlin and she is just going to jump right in. Thanks, Mia. All You're right. Welcome. Let me get this open. All right. Look good. It looks great. Okay, so we've got three ways we're going to highlight today, and I'm going to start by um, talking about three ways that teachers can give actionable feedback within Seesaw. It's important to remember that effective feedback, like Mia said, is given during the learning process, and it connects to students' learning goals. Students have the opportunity to take your feedback in order to better understand the concept or skill that's being taught. 
and students have opportunities to revise their work and make a plan for improvement moving forward. Let's start with comments. Commenting on student posts is a fast and effective way to leave feedback in Seesaw. Once students post to the journal, you'll be required to look at and approve posts before it gets posted on student Seesaw journal. Before approving, you'll wanna look through their work and provide some feedback. Comments are a quick and easy way to provide students that feedback. Um, what's great is that there are two ways of leaving comments for students on their posts. You can either write a text comment or leave audio comments. You can type your comment and use the audio, audio tool to record your comments if you would like to add that extra support for those students that are pre-readers um, and even make it more accessible for your English language learners. Students can hear your voice giving meaning, meaningful feedback on their work. I know that my students love listening to me talk directly to them. Um, I feel like it's such a special way to make those connections with your students. If your comment feedback includes areas that you would like your students to improve on, Seesaw Premium users can have the ability to send back work as drafts. So once you click that button in the upper right hand corner, this post will automatically be sent back to students as a draft, giving them the opportunity to make adjustments and improve. Students then, from the student view, can open up that draft and see your feedback right on their creative canvas. This is a new feature that I absolutely love. Students can edit their work and also see that feedback right there in the upper right-hand corner, corner so that they have that support right there um, for them while they're editing their work in order to be more successful in their revisions. Another way to give feedback is by adding Bitmojis to student work. In an instant, a picture or a Bitmoji can convey a thought, many times faster than a lot of typed words. Using stickers and Bitmojis can help students see your feedback and feel that emotion, and they're kind of fun for students to see. While you're approving students' work, you can add a Bitmoji, like this kind of digital sticker that you see right here. Here you can see an assignment where the student created the number 45 in a few different ways. When the teacher was looking through the, assess the assignment, she edited the post and then put a fun Bitmoji saying, good job, Tony. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Bitmojis. They seem to become a real hit during distance learning the past couple of years. To make it even better in Seesaw, teachers love leaving audio feedback attached to their Bitmoji. So you can do this by clicking on the Bitmoji and then clicking those three dots. You'll see this menu as shown here and you'll click voice. Here is where you can record an audio comment that attaches right onto the Bitmoji. When students see that audio icon, students then can listen to the audio comment left by you, the teacher. So let's take a closer look at what that looks like. So here is that same example with the Bitmoji added on top of the student's work. And let's take, let's listen. Great job, Tony. I love how you showed how you got this answer. You wrote the number 45, you showed me with place value blocks, and you wrote an equation at the top. Great job today. Perfect. So this was just a quick and easy way to kind of leave a little bit more meaningful and fun feedback for students to listen to. Here is a little cheat sheet overview of the steps that you go through to add your Bitmoji and add audio to it. Don't worry about copying this down. You'll receive these slides in a follow-up email so you can refer back to them later. I'm gonna go ahead and um, explore, just kind of show you a little bit of how I add Bitmojis to work as well as kind of demonstrate how you can add audio to those Bitmojis. So if you'd like to follow along, you can, or you can sit back and watch and you will receive the recording in a follow-up email. So here I have Mia's post um, on one of the new Seesaw Lessons activities. Um, how can I describe a character? So students 
listened to the story and they thought about the main character's traits inside or outside. And here's where the student responded. Now, I want to say, great job, Mia. Um, give her that feedback. I'm going to go up here to this extension, which is um, a Bitmoji extension in Chrome in the Chrome browser. So if you use Chrome as your, your browsing window, um, you can download this extension and it pops up right here. Once you log into your Bitmoji account, here's where I can easily search um, a bunch of different emojis. So way to go, good job, killing it, well done. So I'm gonna actually just copy this Bitmoji right here and I can paste it onto the student's canvas. But first, I'm gonna have to edit their post, okay? So here's what they turned into me. I'm gonna click edit post. I'm gonna to go to the slide I'd like to leave the feedback on and I can paste that Bitmoji right here for the students to see. So maybe I'll put it up here so it's not blocking any of their work. Now, when I click on my Bitmoji, here are those three dots I was talking about. I'm gonna click those three dots, click voice, and here's where I can record my voice. Great job, Mia. I really like that you were able to um, tell me about the character's outside traits that you saw, as well as understand the inside traits, how the, how the character was feeling. So now here's the Bitmoji. I'm gonna put it down here so there's nothing else in the way. Here's the Bitmoji on the students work, kind of like a sticker, except the students will see this audio icon. Great job, Mia. I really like that you... And here is the audio feedback for students. So kind of a fun way to, um, to put on a digital sticker for your students and add audio feedback for them to, to see. All right. Let's continue. All right, another way to give feedback to your students is by vi adding videos to your um, to the to the students' work. Hold on one second. Gotta find my notes. Okay. Leaving, uh, leaving video feedback can be another way to add personal and meaningful feedback to students' work. Here is a little, um, here's a screen recording of exactly how you can add a video, add video feedback to students' work. Um, I just made this quick screencast and added it to the presentation to show you exactly what it looks like. So. It looks like you wanted to buy this toy for 99 cents. So let's count how much we have. These are all dimes. Let's count by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 30. So I won't make you watch the whole thing, but you can see that I'm able to use the draw tool and the record tool at the same time. So first, like I said earlier, you head to those three dots at the bottom right hand corner of student work to edit the post. And then you'll be able to open the student's work and click on that microphone tool on the left hand side. You'll be able to record and draw providing great explanations right on top of the student work. Um, I'm going to fast forward a little bit here. Because once I'm done with the video, oops, let me go back there really quick. Once I'm done with the video, it creates an overlay right on top of the student's work. So here's the whole video. I just resized it and put it in the upper left-hand corner so students can refer back to it while on their assignment page right there. So the video is not covering up their whole work, but I just resized that video and put it in the corner for them to view while they're editing their assignment. Adding videos to student work is a great 
way to explain the activity further, um, leave comments on works, and also um, a great way to reteach a topic. So if you feel like your students need a little bit more support for a concept they might be struggling with, you might want to add a video so that they can have that personalized support. Um, for, and you can do that for each individual student, depending on the areas that they're struggling with. This way you can target and reteach those specific skills. Carving out time in your weekly plans to allow students to go through and revise any work is definitely a best practice. The best learning happens when students identify mistakes and then try again. In my classroom, we're constantly talking about having a growth mindset. And we talk about how mistakes make our brains grow. And that's the only way that we're able to improve and make our brains stronger. So um, I make sure that every week I designate some time for students to go through, read that feedback, make some edits. And that really closes the learning loop for students when they are learning and practicing new concepts in your classroom. Here is a great five-step summary um, to show you how you can add video for reteaching, to add video feedback. Um, again, you'll have this in the follow-up email, but it's a great kind of quick cheat sheet um, for you to have when you are integrating that into your own classroom. But I'm going to go ahead and show you, do a little demo again, just so that you can see exactly how I created those videos. So here's my Bitmoji. I'm going to leave this one. Let's see. Let me refresh this. Okay. So here is a student's assignment that was turned into me, and it was a writing assignment. So this is also another activity that is in within the Seesaw Lessons um, the new lessons library. Hold on. I'm going to delete that. Okay. So I can see here's my activities list. Here's my activities list. This is one activity that I assigned. This is a demo class. So it doesn't have all of my students and their names, but I'm going to click on Colleen's work and I'm going to go through here's the learn and the read section of this activity. Um, they did a word search and here was the writing part that Colleen did. So I want to leave video feedback on this piece. So I go to the three dots at the bottom right hand corner. I'm going to click edit post. Here is where the assignment's going to pop up. You can see all the different pages here. I'm going to click on the page I'd like to leave feedback on. And here is where I can click the camera icon on the left side, click video. Oh no. I think because I'm on Zoom, I'm not able to also access my video on here. My other computer lets me, but no worries. I'm gonna click the camera icon here and that is when that video icon, you saw that video icon, then a video is gonna pop up and I can add video feedback. If you'd like to see the draw and record option, I can click the microphone tool right here and start recording. And now I'm able to not only record my voice, but also I can use the drawing tool to mark up any work. So I might say, um, I think the best dog is a pug dog because it is small and playful and it is cute too. Oh, I'm gonna say, oh, Mia. Oh my gosh, my video. Okay. It's not a great circle. I'm gonna restart, there we go. I'm gonna say, oh, Mia, double check which two you're using when you are writing. Um, I'm gonna keep reading. Um, it's fur is short, so mud cannot get in it. Hmm, is in the best word you wanna use here? It bark is small, hmm. Um, so it is not loud. Maybe you wanna use its bark. It is its bark with an S on it. Don't forget a capital letter at the beginning of your sentence. 
Okay, so we're gonna say I edited this whole assignment, kind of gave you a little idea of how I can use my audio tool and my drawing tool at the same time. And now here's that video overlay that I was talking about, see? So don't let it fool you. You can move it over, use the bottom right hand little dots and make it smaller. So now I can add this anywhere on the screen. I can go ahead and delete or erase my markings. So my markings remain here in the video and the student can go back in and edit their work. But having that video right there is so useful for students. Um, and again, I just did that by clicking the microphone and I recorded my voice and used the drawing tool at the same time. So I feel like as a teacher, that, that feature is life-changing <laughs> and really gives students um, a great way to see your feedback right there on the canvas. Thanks so much, Caitlin. Um, those were three wonderful ideas for um, using feedback and um, using the new feedback feature with the comments that appear directly within the canvas or either editing a post to include that screen recording is really great for those littlest learners um, because they have your feedback, like you mentioned, right next to their work. So they know exactly um, what they need to work on. So those are really great. So now that we um, have seen um, those three different ways. We would love to hear from you. So in the chat, let's discuss how um, do you plan to give actionable feedback in your classroom after this webinar um, in the next seven days? So which one of those ways are you most excited to jump in and try? Go ahead and drop what you think in the chat that you want to try. Big emojis. And I did see a, a question or a comment in the chat saying that their district blocks bit emojis. Um, another thing that you can do is you can add um, any image to your seesaw. So you can um, copy an image um, from Google or download it to your computer and upload that image. And you can add audio to any image on the camp on the canvas. So maybe you can find a star or um, any image that you would use to like that um, to add audio. We also have a shapes feature within Seesaw. So we have stars there. We have speech bubbles. You can insert and you can add audio um, to those as well. You just would follow those same steps that Caitlin mentioned. Um, in order to, to add audio to those images that we have on the canvas. So maybe you wanna give your students a gold star um, and add a little bit of audio. So if you are unable to uh, use Bitmojis, then um, that's kind of a workaround for you. All even, right. even when adding directions, sometimes I say, look for the gold star so you can hear the audio directions. Um, for those kindergarten students, those pre-readers, and even your English language learners. Great. So I see a bunch of you sharing more responses in the chat. Bitmoji with audio. Draw and record. Draw and record has been a game changer. You're really able to provide that specific feedback um, on the canvas so students know exactly where it is that they need to adjust um, their work and what they need to correct. Great. So I'm going to turn it back over to Caitlin and um, she's going to talk about um, how you can support students in giving peer feedback. Awesome. Love looking through the chat. We'll continue on. So like Mia said, um, another great way is through um, getting students involved in giving feedback to their peers. Students can also comment on each other's posts giving them an, an authentic audience for their work and valuable feedback from their peers. Enabling comments is a valuable opportunity for students to practice digital citizenship as well. In order to allow comments, you will want to head to your class settings using the wrench icon in the upper right-hand corner. Under the section that says students, you're gonna click students likes and comments. Use those toggles to enable likes and comments. It's always important to teach your students how to give effective feedback before jumping into it. 
Many teachers like to use the acronym TAG as an easy way to, to model effective feedback. The T stands for tell me something you liked. The A stands for ask a question. And G stands for give a suggestion. So I know that if I didn't go over this with my students, a lot of their comments would be awesome, cool, me too. And we really want our students to be digging a little deeper, um, providing some more meaningful feedback, especially as they get a little bit older in first and second grade. A great way to scaffold this TAG kind of acronym is to assign students an activity where they have to practice each element of TAG separately. So here's an example of the letter T. Tell me something you liked. Once you save this activity to your library, you can edit the assignment and insert any relevant work example from your class. Students then can respond and practice practice commenting about something that they liked about a specific work sample. So here is what this activity looks like. And this is linked right in the um, slide deck. So you can save this activity. You're also able to, after you save it, edit the activity to make it fit for your classroom. And this is just a great way to, again, scaffold this for students. We're going to practice T today. Tell me something you like. So we're going to put, um, as a teacher, I'm going to put a work sample on there and you're going to tell me something you liked about it. You can do that same thing for A. Um, ask a question. View the work sample and ask a question about what you see. There's the activity. And then finally, here's the activity for G. Again, all of these activities are linked in the presentation. So if you want to use these activities, you can definitely save them and add them to your Seesaw lesson library. Seesaw blogs are an, also an amazing way to showcase the work that is being done in your classroom and share it with and sharing that work with a broader community. Blogging gives students an authentic audience of their classmates, their parents, and other students around the globe, encouraging better work and providing opportunities for real feedback. I know that my students, you know, if, if they know their work is gonna be shared with more than just their teacher, they're gonna put their best foot forward and make sure that this is really a great example of what they can produce. Um, Seesaw blogs can be public on the internet um, or password protected and only shared with those that you um, send it to. Teachers control whether or not class folders are shown in the blog um, and students and parents' last names are always hidden. Teachers moderate all posts before they go live on the blog and blog comments can be enabled or disabled um, and all blog comments are required um, Teacher approval is required for all, for all blog comments. So after you enable blogs in your Seesaw settings, that wrench icon in the upper right-hand corner, um, this globe icon will then appear under all of the posts. Once you click that icon, this post can now be viewed on your class blog for everyone that has access to your blog. They can also comment and leave audio messages as well. Another great way to use blogs is to connect to other classrooms. Um, with Seesaw Connected Blogs, students can collaborate with students in other classes, leave comments, and develop digital citizenship skills. Everything happens within the Seesaw app or website, so it's simple, safe, and also teacher moderated. To connect to another blog, you will need to use the Seesaw blog URL from the other teacher. Seesaw Blogs is a safe way for your students to engage with other classrooms, share their learning, and it's all built right inside Seesaw. If you want to learn more about blogs, you can head to this link right here um, and it will go through all the information about Seesaw Blogs. I don't wanna to spend too much time on this today, so we're gonna continue on. All right, Mia. All right, thank you so much, Caitlin. Um, so 
Now that you learned about how to get students involved in giving um, that feedback to one another, um, what supports will you provide your students in giving um, peer feedback? Go ahead and drop your thoughts in the chat. So Linda said modeling, yes, you know, our, our youngest learners, um, they definitely need that explicit step-by-step um, -step modeling. So yes, that is a, an, an excellent support. Um, let's see, Rachel said, love the idea of using tag. Yes, giving students that framework um, so they know exactly what to do. Um, and by using those activities that Caitlin shared with you, um, you can also not only model when you're in front of your students, but you can attach, like she said, that work sample and you can provide a model directly within that Seesaw activity so that when students are practicing on their own, um, they don't have to keep raising their hands and saying, Miss Leonard, Miss Leonard, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do this. They have that mop, that screen recording or um, that example right directly within the Seesaw campus. Canvas. Great. I know for my kindergartners, another like support I would give them is those specific sentence stems. I know we had those frames, but when you frame your response, these are, this is, you know, how you would frame it. Here are some sentence stems that you can use um, to give your peers that feedback. Great. All right, so we're going to jump right in to um, how you can get your families involved in uh, giving feedback. So Caitlin's going to take it away again. So we've talked about teachers giving feedback. We talked, we talked about peers giving feedback. Now let's get families involved. Um, and we're going to give some examples of how parents can leave meaningful feedback for their students. One of the most accurate predictors of student success is the extent to which families are involved in their child's learning and supported at home. And Seesaw is amazing because it brings educators, students, and families together to create a powerful learning loop between the classroom and home. Parents have this unique ability to kind of have a window into the classroom, see what their student is doing and producing on a daily basis, and also interact with it, leave comments, facilitate those conversations at home, um, give some positive feedback, um, words of encouragement. With students, with Seesaw, students know that their work is not only being seen by their teacher, their classmates, but also their family. And like I said, having that larger audience for their work can be powerful. Students will put their best foot forward knowing that a larger audience will be able to see their work. With CSAS, um, we can um, post right here, just like on comments. You can also add, um, you can add audio comments or text comments. You can also click the like button. We mentioned using the tag model for modeling appropriate and effective feedback for students, but this model can be used for parents as well. So sending home a family tag letter like this provides parents an example of how to leave structured feedback on their child's posts. You can share this letter with families using Seesaw announcements. Um, in this slide deck, this uh, a download for this parent letter is also linked as well. And I'll demo how you can add this to a Seesaw announcement that goes to the connected families in Seesaw. If a note, caption, comment, announcement, or message is written in a different language that is different from the home language of a family's or teacher's device, a C translation pops up below the post. Um, if you tap that C, translate, C translation button, um, Seesaw will automatically translate any text into your native language. Seesaw can translate messages into over 50 languages, which is definitely um, a life changing thing in the classroom when you are trying to communicate with families and keep them connected, keep them in the loop. Um, families who are able to access this in their native language will feel a lot more connected and are able to support their children even more. I see a question in the chat. Is this letter in English and Spanish? This is just um, 
a letter that a colleague has created. So I, we kind of borrowed this from a colleague to share and we don't have it in Spanish, um, but that is a great suggestion. I'll let her know you asked and people are interested. All right, so I'm gonna show you how you can add this, um, this tag letter to an announcement. And I'm gonna put the link to the tag letter in the chat just so that if you wanted to follow along, you could also, you can just download that. I have it on my desktop just for easy access when I'm presenting for you all. Um, I don't have to dig through my files. So let me move around some windows here. All right, so if I go into my Seesaw account, I can click my trusty green add button and click send announcement. And here is where I can send announcement to all family members. And this is where that attachment comes in handy. I'm gonna click the attachment. You have all of Seesaw's creative tools. For this instance, I'm just gonna upload this letter that um, I have for tag. So I just dragged and dropped it in and boom, it comes right up in the Seesaw canvas. I can click check. And maybe I want to write a little message and say, hello, kindergarten families. Um, we would love to have you involved. We'd love to have you involved in sharing your feedback and commenting on your students' posts in order to make it the most valuable feedback. Um, here's a great outline that we practice in our classroom. And maybe I just write a little blurb about what TAG acronym means, and then the parents will be able to view this letter right within Seesaw. So I'll click check. When I'm done writing this whole um, little blurb, this message, I can click send now, and I can see that it's sent to the six family members that I have connected within my Seesaw account. So download that letter if you're interested and save it to your computer and send that announcement for when you're ready to get families um, leaving that meaningful feedback on their students' posts. Thank you, Caitlin. What a great resource. And thank you so much for sharing all those amazing strategies that teachers can use to support students in giving that actionable feedback. So um, let's just take a moment to stop and think what impact does actionable feedback actually have on student learning? Go ahead and drop some responses in the chat. Let me send that link one more time. There we go. Thank you. Yes, Leslie. Leslie shares that students will want to work harder. They're motivated um, when they see um, that you are, are giving them feedback on their work. Yep, adults show interest. Students will want to work harder. Heather shared it allows students or children to know um, right away what they do and do not understand. Yes. reaches more students if they don't have time during the day to talk to them. Yes, that is um, uh, definitely a benefit of providing that feedback within the platform. Great, builds trust. All right. So I'm gonna go over and take over that screen sharing there. Caitlin, there we go. All right. Um, yeah, so you shared a lot of your thoughts um, in the chat with us, um, but that meaningful and actionable feedback really supports students um, because it gives them a plan of action to support them in meeting their goals. Um, it encourages that reflection and it, it 
supports students to extend that thinking and um, it empowers them. It builds agency by really actively involving students in the learning process. Um, and this is um, such a powerful thing, especially for those littlest learners that are oftentimes de um, dependent a lot on adults. So really allowing um, them to get involved in that process. You know, they can record their peer feedback with audio as well. You can give them feedback via video and screen recording really builds that agency and empowers them um, throughout that learning process. So um, you will be receiving in the follow-up email a handout uh, that um, has a, just a bunch of highlights from the session today. Um, and we would love for you to use that highlight, uh, that handout once you receive it, um, to just think about one way you will facilitate that actionable feedback in your classroom and go ahead and um, apply that one way in your classroom within one week of our session tonight. So you did it. We covered a lot um, in this past 45 minutes. We talked about those three effective ways to give that actionable feedback. We talked about how to teach your students um, to give peer feedback. And we um, finally ended by talking about ways to support families in providing feedback on um, their child's work. There was a question in the chat about, um, hey, how do I find out about all of these webinars that Seesaw offers? So you can do that by going to our training site, web.seesaw.me forward slash training, and we will drop the link to that site in the chat. And um, that training site here um, lists out all of our upcoming live webinars that we have. We have a number of webinars going on for um, Southern Hemisphere right now because they are going back to school. However, you might find that content helpful to you. So go ahead and register, even if the time is not optimal. If you register for those live events, um, you will always receive a link to the recording and the resources, even if you cannot attend live. So definitely check out our training page to find any upcoming webinars. Um, also, um, if you scroll a little bit further down, we have some on-demand and playlists uh, that cover a number of topics in Seesaw. So if you are brand new, we have all of um, our getting started videos. Those are the blue ones. And then if you've been using Seesaw for a while, we have some videos um, that can support you in digging deeper with Seesaw. So definitely check out our training page. And we would love to take any additional questions that you have right now. We do have um, just another minute or so. Um, there was one question that I saw come up repeatedly in the chat. So there was a question um, and someone asked, could I, can I copy and paste the same video of feedback into multiple posts? So right now you on, are unable to do that. But one thing that you can do is you can create a new post and you can um, create a video within that post um, that contains feedback for your students. So, um, you know, if you gave a math assessment and you noticed that your students um, kind of just got tripped up on the same thing, you might want to create a video or a screencasting in a separate post. And then uh, when you go to send that post to students, what you can do is you can just tag those students um, that you want to send that speed that specific feedback to so that's one kind of workaround uh, for that let's see if there are any other final questions before um, we go another thing in terms of like uh, the audio for like the bitmoji or any of those digital stickers um, similarly if you have um, a piece of feedback that you notice that you know you're given to multiple students you can record it on your computer and you can upload that audio um, that way you don't have to make a new recording every time you go to insert or attach that audio to your bitmoji or to your digital sticker or to your shape or whatever it is that you're adding in Seesaw. Work smarter, not harder. <laughs> That's right. All right. Thank you all so much for joining us today. So there was another question about commenting on the blog. Can we make it so that families can only comment 
on their own child's work. So right now, families can only comment on their own child's work in the family app. Um, on the blog, they can comment on any posts that you uh, post for the blog if you have that feature enabled, but all comments must be approved by you. So um, you can review that comment before a parent posts and you can decide to approve it or not um, so that um, students can see or they cannot see um, those posts. Great. So just as a reminder, thank you so much for coming today. You will be receiving an email um, in approximately 48 to 24 to 48 hours with the slides along with a certificate of completion, a link to the recording and a one pager um, that contains um, just highlights from the session about supporting your students and giving actionable feedback. We, it has been a pleasure. Thank you so much, Caitlin, for sharing all of your expertise yes. with everyone today. Um, and happy seesawing, everyone. Thank you for joining Thanks us. Thanks for joining. Everyone have a wonderful night. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. -bye. Bye.